Al Manorino is going to talk about the RAD server development lifecycle, show you some sample applications, and explain how the REST-based architecture can be deployed and then used from different desktop and mobile client applications. Go ahead, Al. RAD server is a set of services that provide a turnkey solution for building multi-tier applications. The RAD server is a REST web service that supplies a ready-made administrative API and which can easily be extended with custom endpoints. RAD server is a turnkey RAD application server that provides a robust out-of-the-box backend platform on which to build and deploy your Delphi and C++ builder code and application services. With RAD server, there is no longer a need to build your own backend servers and services. With RAD server, you simply load your Delphi and or C++ builder methods into RAD server and publish your backend code to any client via REST JSON endpoints. Built-in services and integrations like enterprise database integration, location and proximity tracking, built-in data store, and Internet of Thing edgeware connectivity provide all the most common functionality and access to key external systems. RAD server is a single, easy to use, and easy to deploy server. And RAD Server is built on Embarcadero's Enterprise Mobility Services EMS core technology. The three key items with the RAD Server are REST endpoint publishing for your APIs. RAD Server is an application server for your backend for your Delphi or C++ builder code. You put your Delphi or C++ builder code into RAD Server and it creates manageable REST endpoints. Now let's look at how to add existing or new Delphi or C++ builder code to RAD Server and create REST endpoints. As we see here, it's a this EMS server. Uh, it's running on my Windows IP address in the default port of 8080. So now you're able to call these EMS uh, administrative APIs. So EMS being this turnkey middleware server. So out of the box, you get these administrative REST uh, APIs for built-in resources to do version, users, groups, and installations. And as you can see here, these, these resources expose endpoints like get users. You know, for, for users, I can either get all users or get uh, an individual user. So EMS is using standard HTTP, REST, and, and JSON, uh, JavaScript object notation. So we can call these endpoints from a browser. So if I open up a browser, you know, by default it says uh, do the version endpoint. Instead of version, I could ask for users. And here's all the users that I got registered. So you see for users, it did the get, so it returned a, a JSON array of all of my all of my users but if you looked at users it also had a it also had a get item so i can i can pick an individual user and i can ask just for its json object to be returned so if i take this user here and say i don't want all users to come back i just want this individual user with this individual id then instead of getting back that json array we just get back the json object for, just for this one user so one way of accessing the uh, the ems server is, is through this browser for for testing purposes so by default we have these administrative apis in here but we want to we want to now be able to extend the endpoints and the resources with our own custom resources and endpoints so when you extend this EMS server using runtime packages that we're going to define and register resources, and we do that by this nice wizard inside of RAD Studio. So if you go to File, New, Other, you'll see for both uh, C Builder and for Delphi, you have, a, you have a new EMS node. And from this node is where we can create new EMS packages. And in, inside these EMS packages is where we create our modules. And those modules become our new endpoints in our resources that we can use to extend it. So for example, if we want to create a new custom uh, resource, a new custom endpoints, we'll say package. 
So we can create an empty package that doesn't register the resource. You can do that later. But in our case, we want to create a package with the resource that we want to get registered to the EMS server. Resource name, I'll just call it demo for now. Uh, you can put it inside of a data module. Now, data modules usually reserved for uh, if you're going to connect to backend databases, it gives you a nice uh, surface to add you know, data access components, or it could be in a standalone unit, but I'm going to pick it as a data module because I like working with data modules. And then these are the endpoints that you can ask for or, or include, you know, get, get item, post, put item, in, and delete item. So you can select them all if you want. So this module gets created. And, if, and it, as you see here, it's a, it's a BIPL, so it's a, uh, it's a package. So this package cannot run on its own. Uh, so to help us, either on the run, run uh, parameters, we see here, when we run this project, uh, it's going to first start the EMS developer server, and then it's going to load this package into the server with our newly created uh, custom resources and, and, and endpoints. So if we look at what it creates by default, you'll see here it creates the created a resource name of demo that's inside of a inside of a T data module. And we have our get and our get item post. If you take a look at some of these, some of these have this resource suffix item, and, and those are the ones that allow me to uh, to pass parameters to it. So for example, if I just did a get. I get everything returned. But if I did a get item, I can also pass a, a, an individual item like we did for, uh, for get users to return one individual user. We have the same for put item and the same for delete. So inside of here is where you would add your uh, additional custom resources and endpoints. So these are the same files we created. This time I called my resource name my, my resource inside of a T data module. What I did for this one, is I created a new new custom endpoint called reverse string. So its signature is very similar to, to all of these others. So And because it's a reverse string where I, I want to pass it in a value, a parameter, and then run the reverse string on it, it has this resource suffix on here. And then to implement it, similar to how we used to do with the... Uh, if you ever ran a data snap server and you asked for the uh, sample methods, this is kind of one of those sample reverse string methods we did there. So here's the implementation of, uh, of reverse string. Get the reverse string, pass in an item, and then do the uh, reverse string function on it. And that reverse string function is part of uh, system string utils. So the great way or the great reason to use Rad Studio to create these custom resources and endpoints is you can use all the power of, of Delphi and or C++ Builder to create these custom endpoints for you. A second key item with Rad Server is an integration platform for integration middleware for integrating databases and devices. Now let's look at how to integrate with databases using Rad Server. So we're going to show another EMS server where we included a fire DAC and a data module to get to backend databases. So kind of just how we did before, uh, we ran the uh, EMS wizard. We created this EMS fire DAC resource package. Inside of the package, we have a we have a module, and on the data module, we added our fire DAC connection. So this fire DAC connection will connect to whatever backend database you wanted to connect to. Uh, it's got Query components that queries backend database. You can check it here just to make sure it works. Query customers, query the orders. That's all working fine. That's the backend EMS server where we have extended inside of this module. We created this resource name called test, test inside a data module. And it's got endpoints like get going through fire deck and post going through fire deck. And we do their implementation here. And we see here we're using the, the Fire Deck Schema Adapter. It knows how to uh, save to stream and, and load from stream. So it's a very powerful capability of this Fire Deck Schema Adapter. Once we return the JSON object out from EMS through Fire Deck, we can now take that data and convert it to a nice tabular form to, the, to display inside of tables. Let me show you this running and we'll see what it looks like. So again, we see here we created a new resource called Test that has endpoints of get records and post updates. So to test it, so if we just ran test, it should return everything back from the database. So if I open up a browser 
and I pass it test. It goes through uh, goes through EMS, uses the FireDAC connector to get to the backend database, and returns a nice uh, JSON array of of all the data. So that's cool. So now we can use this endpoint uh, inside of client applications. So for EMS, we include an EMS provider. So the important properties here is where is the EMS server running? What's its URL host and what port is it running on? There's an EMS FireDAC client, and this tells us the resource that we want to hit. So in our case, we want to hit the test resource. And if we looked at the, uh, the two functions here, get tables and post tables, and so when I call get tables, uh, inside of that test resource, there was the get data endpoint that's going to return uh, data from the from the EMS server through FireDAC, and the other one was post updates that will any changes we make will get posted back to the database using this FireDAC data access client component. So EMS server is running. So when I run the client and I do get tables, it does the get get data and returns back the data. So you get that nice JSON array that comes back, and we can format it nicely into this master detail type of format through that FireDAC schema component, so that does that very well. Then any changes I make here, if I make a change and I post it, it will do it will do its post. So that works out all fine. So that's a quick look on how you can use um, EMS custom packages and include the FireDAC data access components to get to backend database resources and return the results back to these call-in clients. The third key item with RAD Server is to provide robust application services. Now these are built-in services for what you might have either acquired from third parties or built yourself with Delphi or C++ Builder. Services like user directory, authentication, push notifications, location tracking, and other services like these. Now let's look at push notifications with RAD Server. So for push notifications, like you see here, uh, we can even use VCL client apps to send push notifications to uh, to mobile connected apps to EMS servers, or they can be they can be FireMonkey multi device apps like we saw running before. So before I had this running on my Android tablet, it looks like this. So in in XE8, we added. Uh, push notification support inside of EMS for both Google Cloud Messaging and Apple push notifications. So you can have a mix of devices registered into EMS and it's very simple to do the registration. I'm going to say the most coolest new feature we put inside of EMS is, is be able to do uh, push notifications, but it's very critically important for these mobile architectures because it's the, it's the only way is the conduit to notify mobile applications even when they're not running uh, on the device. So what's cool about that? There's no there's no background no background thread that's needed. Uh, part of the Google Cloud messaging and Apple push notifications does all of this push notifications for us. We give you this ready-to-use component called push events, and this is what it needs to uh, do the push notification. So the only two components I have on here to enable me to do push notifications, one is the EMS provider, like we saw before, give me the IP address and the port of where uh, the EMS server is running, and then we drop a push events on here, and we just connect the, the provider name of push events to the EMS provider, and then push events has a event called push events received. So if the EMS sends out the push notifications and then when the client receives the push notification it triggers this push events push received. And here at the very low level we, we package up that push notification either coming from uh, Apple push notification or from the Google Cloud messaging. So it's as simple as that. Even the basic default EMS server includes push notifications right out of the box. We, we pre-configure this for you. So then you can create applications to, to send push notifications. So if I now go to the application we created and I click its test connection just to make sure I can connect to the backend server, EMS server. If I click on register the installation, 
uh, it registers this device to the EMS application. So now at this point, the fact that EMS knows about this device makes it easy for me to send out push notifications. So just like how we did before, one nice way to do it, uh, in addition to the EMS console, we give you an EMS management console that we can check authentication, log into it, and we saw we could send push notifications. So I'll just do this very quickly again. Hello, where do I want to send it? So these are all my Android devices that have been installed on here. And when I say go send it, it sends it out there. And we see how easy it is to send a push notification to Android. And the same thing works with, uh, with Apple on iOS devices. And so that was a quick look at the new Embarcadero RAD server. The development cycle typically is build your client user experience using Delphi or C++ Builder. Then create your server API endpoints by loading the server with your Delphi or C++ Builder code to create your endpoints. Then integrate your enterprise databases, cloud services, or use our Internet of Things framework, which allows you to integrate a wide variety of smart devices into the backend. Then easily add users and groups and API access control for who can access the APIs. You can also use the built-in integrated database persistence engine or use your own external database server. And then you can deploy the RAD server. So today, RAD server supports deploying to Windows services on premises or you can also deploy to the cloud such as Amazon AWS. Rackspace or Microsoft's Azure Cloud. Later in the roadmap, we'll add Linux as a deployment platform. The RAD server includes a built-in management portal, allowing you to manage your APIs, users, groups, push notifications, and installations. And the installations are the client devices that have connected to your RAD server. This lets you analyze the activity of all the APIs, the REST endpoints, all user activity, and all connections. And all of this is measured and logged. And then you can analyze all of this from the management portal, showing you how the applications are being used, what REST endpoints are being accessed, when and by what users and what groups. Hey, thanks for that great demonstration, Al.